Verdelia Turner, and this is Let's Talk. And today we are interviewing for District 3 Race, Atlanta Public Schools. And with us this morning, we have the incumbent, Michelle Olympiadis. And she's going to share with us. And to my right, Omar Ali with Ali Development. Thank you so much. And we'll just get started. And good morning. Good morning. How are y'all? We're doing good. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. You are the incumbent. How long have you been on the Atlanta board? So uh, if I finish up this year, it'll be six years. So basically five and a half plus years. This is my second term. And as you know, or may not know, uh, we worked through the legislator to or the legislative uh, session two years ago to break up our our um, our seats so that all nine of us are not running at the same time. So um, this is the first round of having all the odd seats run. So you'll see that one, three, five, seven, and nine are running this fall against no one else in the city. So we really need people to come out and decide who they want to vote for um, so that we can have a, a more balanced uh, board, if that makes sense. Okay. And District 3, describe it briefly for us. Of course. Uh, so District 3 is basically, uh, well, we've be, been rezoned due to city rezoning. So it's city districts 5 and 6 that have been rezoned over the past year. Um, so at this point now, you're looking at South uh, Petrie Hills, uh, Garden Hills, Brookhaven, and then you're coming over into um, Martin Linridge Manor. Uh, Morningside, a little bit of Virginia Highland still, uh, and then that's bridging bridging you over into um, uh, Druid Hills, uh, Lake Clair, and then taking you out to East Atlanta. And in East Atlanta, you've got uh, Edgewood, Kirkwood, East Atlanta, East Atlanta Villages. So that 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 area of town is still pretty much the same. It's kind of more of this kind of this more uh, western northern side that's had a little bit of a change. So serving on the board, how many superintendents have you worked with? Uh, is serving on the board since or you, serving since you're serving since, on the board in since elected, I've yes. been serving on the board or you know as a parent's yeah. a little different. Um, and serving on the board, so um, this is uh, currently I've gone through two permanent superintendents and working with Dr. Battle as our interim. And thank you for that support for Dr. Battle. We appreciate that. She's absolutely now, now wonderful. Now, you've been a parent activist for a long time. Yes, ma'am. Tell us about your work there and how and why that qualifies you and other reasons to be the person re-elected to District 3. So, uh, I have a very interesting story. Um, I have three children. Uh, my eldest has special needs. And uh, when, I'll be quite frank, when I got started with him uh, to go into kindergarten at our neighborhood elementary school, um, I was directly told um, that he was not smart enough to go to my elementary school in my neighborhood. And that became my advocacy to explain that it's a public school and it's his neighborhood school and those are the kids he knows, and this is the environment that we know. And I worked very hard uh, with the administration downtown. Uh, we did go to Burgess Peterson one day a week so that he could get some uh, extra special ed help. Um, however, I kept him in our school, and I didn't really realize, um, I don't think I really realized how much of an advocate I was until we went through redistricting and my neighbors called me and they were like, we wanna hear what you have to say about what's going on with redistricting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why would you wanna hear anything about what I wanna say about what's going on with redistricting? And they're like, Michelle, you kept your son in school. Mm -hmm. So they saw the advocacy or the passion, I guess, with respect to doing what I would say is the right thing um, and I said, okay, let's sit down and talk about it. And so we went through redistricting, and at the time, this is 10, 12 years ago, uh, they were talking about putting uh, our elementary school uh, in a different cluster. And I just, I, I looked at it, and I just disagreed with it, and so I started advocating. And that kind of advocacy rolled me into getting involved with the PTA at the elementary school level. 
um, and eventually I became a PTA president for two years at our elementary school. Um, and at the same time, I rolled into doing local school governance at our middle school. Um, and then once we had redistrict, we decided to have clusters, which I know you're aware of. Um, and uh, I joined our cluster advisory group to try to figure out what we could do to help what's now called the Midtown Cluster um, advance itself um, in making in making a, a, a kind of a cohesive program where the communities could all get together and support our middle school and our upper school uh, and making sure that we had good programming and I got involved with that and um, and then from there it just kind of grew into you know like what's your next step and the next step was maybe I should run for school board and people were very supportive of that at the time and I did and it, it seemed to work out that was brave of you well, it was kind of you to say thank you very much. Bye-bye. I have a question. Um, we've all heard that the school board is divided. Uh, do you think that's true, and, and how well do the school board get along? I know it's a little off-the-cuff question, but curious. Um, so, uh, honestly, um, uh, you know, I, I think we're all very kind to one another mm -hmm. from a business perspective. Um, but I think fundamentally, um, you are correct. We are divided in our thoughts. Okay. Facilities. Uh, and, and forgive me if, I, if I'm getting out of turn. No, no, no. No, no, no you You're go fine. with facilities. <laughs> Bring it on. I like facilities. Facilities has a lot of power, uh, and they've been in place for 15 years with, with no change. And I look at facilities almost as if I look at the school board, change has to happen. How do we control facilities? How do we hold them accountable? Because they can make or break an entire community. Um, I would completely agree with you, and I would say that um, as a board member over the past five years, I've probably been, well, I shouldn't label myself as anything. Um, I'm a very strong advocate um, of, of supporting facilities and helping them address what community need is. Um, I think where you get the pushback is um, there there seems to be some disconnect with respect to where what the board wants to see happen and what facilities wants to see happen if that makes sense in my perspective facilities should have the ability to reach out to you or you reach out to them and y'all come up with a plan mm -hmm. and you bring it to the board and you let us you know you let us give some feedback and you say hey this is our recommendation for where we want to go um, we just, as you know, uh, we just announced that we have eight surplus properties. We were looking at 16 at some point. I would say we have a lot more than 16, but you know, at least we're getting started. Um, we have eight at this point, and there was a little bit of um, pushback about how that process should be. However, um, just last night, um, I spoke directly with the head of facilities and any developer is welcome to make any offer on the eight surplus properties to facilities directly. Mm. And then facilities can come to, uh, come to the board and say, hey, this is what we think is a good idea for this particular property, as opposed to the reverse, which is where some folks wanted to go, if that makes sense. Okay, and they're bound to share it with the board, right? I, I beg your pardon. Are they bound to share? Yes, of okay. course. Oh, ultimately, we have to approve what their recommendation is. Okay. That Are is all correct. All bids brought to the board. Can you see all of them? Although they may be pigeonholed, and I hate, I hate to use that term, but I am. If they if they come up with say, okay, here are the two or three developers, and they there are actually five, will you all be able to see and and question as to why they turned the others down? Can you see all of them? Um, I guess we could ask for that uh, that information. However, typically what happens is if let's just say they get five. Let's say we're talking about whatever. We'll call mm -hmm. it XYZ property. Okay, I don't I don't want to mm -hmm. pick one. But we, let's just say we're talking about XYZ property and they get five proposals. It is up to facilities to bring forth the best recommendation on XYZ facility and bring that to the board. It's not for them to come to us and say, here are five recommendations that we've gotten. What do you think? It's, it is much more their responsibility to do their due diligence and understand, because that's their, 
Mm. I'm not a facilities expert. It is their due diligence to tell us, hey, we got a lot of recommendations, and they may tell us, hey, we got five recommendations, and we think this one's the best, and here's what we're bringing forward. And then we have a discussion as a board with facilities to say, that sounds like a good idea, or could you tell us a little bit more about what was going on with the others? That's a lot of power, whoever's heading facilities up. How large is that department? Um, it's not as large as you think. It's, that, that's it's, extremely a lot of power. It yeah, it, it, so, it's, uh, so you've got Mr. Hoskins, who's the head of operations. You've got Dan Drake, who is the executive director of facilities. And Mr. Drake has a pretty concentrated group of folks who run facilities. It's not a, it's not a big department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the audits yes. in, in regards to it. Now, what, what type of audit, what was the last audit you all did on anything? And and what type of audit was it? Yeah, I'm not on the audit committee any longer, so you've really got me here. Um, uh, okay, so let me just start off by saying um, all the audit reports are on the board's website, on the APS board's website. So we have, because audit falls under the Board of Education, um, so they have all the audits listed. Um, I will tell you, we've had um, audits around technology. We've had audits around um, uh, um, salary compensation. We've had a lot. You are asking me what's the last one, and I won't be able to tell you because, like I said, I don't attend those meetings. Um, but the, we have many audits done at the request of the audit committee and then also Connie Brown, who's the head of audits, does her, she has her own list of things she wants to get done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we pay attention, <clears throat> I know one of her uh, priorities is paying attention to how schools use their budgets. Because that can be a concern, especially since we have a lot of small schools and and even big schools, just making sure that we understand how they're using their money and if they're using it wisely to support children. Um, but we've done audits around compensation. We've done audits around technology. We've done, uh, we all, always have a financial audit on top of uh, what uh, the finance department does with respect to our annual budget. We have an audit on top of that annually. Uh, to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. And in regards to your principal meetings, um, are, is every department allowed to attend meetings with the principals from that central office? At the principal meetings, specifically, is what you're asking mm -hmm. me. Um, that's a great question, Verdell, yeah. I'm saying that because we've had some problems with employee relations and people are not being able to necessarily engage with principals. And, uh, and I'm speaking with another head on right now. Okay. Uh, and I do understand some principals, and uh, I knew who they were. Actually, was speaking to people who were concerned at the central office level about how teachers specifically and some other employees were being treated. Yes. Uh, but uh, there seemed to have been a block. It was under last administration, and uh, <clears throat> Although I like the last superintendent as a person, mm -hmm. we very seldom could see her, talk to her, and she was not visible at all. But it was almost like the departments were running themselves. And when that happens, there's a little accountability to anybody. Yes. Too much autonomy. And, and people working in silos. Mm -hmm. No cross-collaboration. I will agree with you there. Um, with respect to principal... Um, the Wednesday monthly principal gathering. My understanding is that's for principals. I don't necessarily know, excuse me. Pleasure, uh, pleasure. Thank you. <coughs> there might be one more. I usually do it in threes. Um, thank you. It's clean. I just keep. <laughs> I told you it comes in threes. Yeah. So, um, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's very there kind you of you. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Um, but typically, um, Typically, principal meetings are for principals. Um, I have heard very similar tales or, or mm -hmm. you know, thoughts from folks um, about the um, 
inability to access, for teachers to access um, higher level feedback. And um, that is a concern. Mm -hmm. It is a concern. They should never feel uh, pigeonholed, so to mm -hmm. speak. And when I've noticed that practice in the last couple years or so, it reminded me of when I was in the district, way before, I mean, as a teacher. Yes, ma'am. And then as an organizer. I said that was pre Dr. Hall days. Mm -hmm. but, okay. <clears throat> what do you do for a living? So um, I have, uh, I manage uh, rental properties, as currently what I'm doing. Um, and I have, of course, three children. Um, and, um, and uh, of course, I work for the Board of Education. And my mother says, if we could just add a zero to what you do, because you spend so much time doing it, it would be nice. That's where I was going with that, too. That's a lot of time that's consumed. About how many hours, you would say, per month, a person that's interested in being on the Board of Education would need to realistically spend? Um, so I think it depends. Well. That's not nice of me to say. Um, in District 3, exactly, in, in my respective district, um, I, I wouldn't even be able to give you a monthly hour because mm -hmm. I'm pretty much 24-7, and um, I would say that I give it at least 40 to 60 hours a week mm -hmm. because there's that much feedback coming from folks who are concerned um, on many levels, on their individual child up to... A curriculum that's being uh, rolled out in a particular school uh, and how unhappy families are with respect to that particular curriculum and then trying to provide that feedback back to the administration in a way that is um, constructive mm -hmm. even though I've gotten an earful. Okay. Um, it's getting more and more expensive to run for boards of education in certain cities <clears throat> I'm going to date myself. I remember when I was a teacher, it was $7,500, and then they had erased the board, mm -hmm. and that's when uh, the chamber and other folk got mm -hmm. very interested and involved. Uh, and <clears throat> in my opinion, it's more about real estate than it's about children. More about real estate than it's about children. I repeated that for a purpose. Yeah. And especially with some of the rules that are over at the State House now that allows uh, certain types of schools to exist and ask for state charters and then ask for the real estate and that kind of thing. And the public is, is not very much aware. Um, ballpark figure, how much do you think it would take to just win your race with mailers and everything else? Um, that's funny that uh, you bring that up. Um, I, I don't raise a lot of money um, because I don't... you got a lot of supporters. Well, yeah. you're very kind. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, and, and I didn't last time, and it's even less this time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, for me, um, it's it's not about raising money. It's about having relationships with people. It's about understanding where people are coming from. It's about having people's support. Um, and if I have that, I don't. I mean, you think about it. That's for a form of I mean, yeah. for daily, you think about it today. I mean, when I mean, I, I'm just gonna be straight. When I get my mail, they're like 10 cards, mm -hmm. I, and I don't know who they're from. I mean, I don't, and it's like, oh. recycle. Re I mean, I don't even read them. <laughs> I don't even read them. You're right. I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. even read them. It's like, recycle, 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 recycle. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, that's the exterminator. That's the bank. You know, like, you know, like you, you get down to what you need to address. That's right. Um, so, I, I, I'm sorry, but, yeah, I, I, I do like – and I haven't because, uh, well, I'm getting ready to. I do like going door to door. I like going to door to door and handing somebody something, you know, and saying, "Hey, you know, you know, I'm Michelle. You know, um, you know, I'm running for for school board." I like doing that, and I like yard signs. But outside of that, um, yeah, I do. And, and you can look at my disclosure, and I actually owe Miss Scott my disclosure from this weekend. Um, yeah, I have like. I don't know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Mm. I brought I just that. Don't I'm need bringing it up money. because we have seen school board races where the person had no stake in the community. They had astroturf organizations financed by that millionaires. Would, correct. And that they was did my mass first race. mailings, and it was just beautifully done. And folks said, "Well, we didn't know who else to vote for." And that's what's happening, especially in too many urban districts 
where people don't know their candidates. I, I think uh -huh. that I, I will say that happened in my first race, um, in, you know, again, five plus years ago, um, I raised way less than $20,000 and my opponent raised well uh, close to sixty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars and we were in a runoff together but that had it had nothing in my opinion it had nothing to do with finance there were five of us in a race it was naturally going to go into a runoff does mm -hmm. that make sense i mean it it's just kind of the it's just kind of the way the wave would go um but for me it was much more about uh talking to people and getting to know people um and explaining who i was than it was about asking you for a hundred dollars. How long have you been in your neighborhood? Gosh, long time. Um, <laughs> a long, it's more than 25 years. It's got to be close to 28, 29, almost 30 years I've been living in Morningside. Uh -huh. Okay. What about, um, I'm, I'm very keen on entrepreneurship and, and people starting their own business. How do you see that we can bring entrepreneurship back into the schools? You know, that's a that's a great question. And I, I, I think one of the great things that we've done um, is having the College and Career Academy where we're exposing kids to um, different fields mm -hmm. where they can understand maybe where they want to go. So um, there, like there's the HVAC little unit, mm -hmm. there's the dental unit, there's the, um, well, aerospace might be a little hard to be an entrepreneur in, but nonetheless, if you start off at Delta, who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be, you know, um, you could do something else with that. But, but, but I, I believe, you know, having that academy for kids to have the opportunity to explore um, where they have, where they're young and have the opportunity to learn something and potentially make it their own is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, I also want to point out the fact, because um, I'm a huge supporter of Georgia Tech, um, we have several programs at Georgia Tech where we, where they work with APS to mentor kids in understanding where they could go in engineering, where they could go in uh, uh, just kind of, you know, what tech does well, like technology, um, where they could go well in business. These are things mm -hmm. that tech's very strong in, and, and, and they couple with us to help kids uh, understand where those opportunities are. We also have a great relationship with the aquarium, and. Um, I don't know if you could be an entrepreneur in the aquarium, but nonetheless, if, if that biological study, uh, that marine biology study is strong, there may be an opportunity for children to find their way uh, to make a career path out of that. So I, I, I do believe APS offers many pathways um, for kids to figure out where they want to go and uh, encourages them to, to, to find where, where, where their pathway may lie. Excuse me for, for not knowing my lack of knowledge. How do we continue to have some schools that get funded more public schools than other schools? Um, Tell me again. How do we continue to have some public schools that are, that are funded more than some other public schools? Um, is it equal across the board or in some areas? I, I don't understand that because the, the schools that are that are hurting deserve more, but they continue to get less. That's the perception, mm -hmm. and I agree with you. That's the perception, and I agree with you on that. And so, uh, at the last, uh, say with Dr. Battle, I have to say I've really enjoyed working with her. So, um, with Dr. Battle, we met with Dr. Bracken before we even had our budget commission meeting this past month. And um, at the budget commission meeting, and then I asked Dr. Bracken to do it last night at, at the board meeting um, to address these misconceptions. Okay. Uh, and so, um, and I don't want to say, I mean, mm -hmm. it's still hard, don't get me wrong, uh, but basically what we do, uh, so from a foundational standpoint, um, and I even learned a lot from this. We do fund schools first, um, and we do put $5,500 for every student across the board to get started. And then we have this formula called the Student Success Formula, where we weight kids. 
based on what their need is. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, if they um, are in poverty, they get whatever point they get. You know, if they're, um, you know, if they're, uh, if they need interventions, they get this point. You know, obviously, federal dollars go to special needs children, um, but it, so it's all weighted based on what the need is. <clears throat> The, the issue becomes, and to your point, and this was part of my, my um, conversation with the administration, is when we, as a board, which I think is very important as a board, we have agreed that we will support small communities, which means small schools. When you have small schools, um, even though children may or may not get more money, depending on the way that you view it, they still need more. Um, and, and, and I think a simple example of that is, um, you know, my kids went to Morningside, you know, and, you know, Morningside does just fine. But on top of that, at the beginning of the school year, I got this list that said I had to go down to wherever I wanted to go. We went to Target. And I spent another, you know, whatever, 150 bucks a kid to give the teacher whatever the teacher needed. That doesn't happen. Mm-hmm in the majority of our schools. And that was my request, was how do we supplement or augment, either way, however you want to, however you want to call it, the additional supplies that they need. When, 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 if I sat there and I told you, hey, um, in APS, we fund arts, okay, arts. Now, when I say arts, that's band, orchestra, chorus, you know, it's um, visual and performing. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, basic arts. You know, like coloring. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, just to keep it simple. Um, <laughs> we fund that, it, and I'm going to get it wrong. So I'm going to. It's either six or seven dollars per pupil for the whole year. Okay. <laughs> okay. And my school is telling me I need you to go down the street and buy all this and bring it to school. And Why do you think other just, schools aren't doing that? Is that a school-led thing? or It, it is a school-led thing. Mm-hmm. But, let's, Virginia, let's just be honest. <laughs> let's just be honest. The majority of the district, if, if, if I sent home a list from, from a school uh, uh, through the majority of the district that said, I need you to bring in $125, and it doesn't say $125, but by mm-hmm. the time you check off mm-hmm. all the junk in your cart and you go take it down, you know, check out, it, it, uh, the majority of our district can't afford that. One hundred and twenty-five dollars—that might be their month's worth of food. Right. Let's just be straight. And that—and that's a direct correlation between that and why Johnny can't read. I, and those programs are not reaching far enough mm-hmm. into the community. I said we just keep buying programs, keep buying programs, and then we're looking at data, which a lot of times is false, true, or true false yeah. data, but. Unless we get, and we, we talk about it all the time, down to the basics, where those parents live. Because parents, this is not my interview, so I'll cut it short. Parents, that's where kids are coming from, those homes. I got you. And uh, we can do everything that we can, feed people, give them medication, and et cetera. But unless we can also do the same thing with parents, and I've not seen a comprehensive program on that yet. When people say, let's stop, let's back up. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get into the community and see what we can do with adults who are willing right. to help. I mean, I have not seen it. I've seen a lot of lip service from when I live in DeKalb County. People out there running in my district right now for commission. I'm doing everything but call a name. Help them, <laughs> okay? Help them, brought some board people to the table for a yeah. program comprehensively with parents, and they dropped the ball, didn't do a doggone thing. We got to know if we want to have a commissioner. Oh, Lord have mercy. But it's so much money. What's, what's the budget of Atlanta Public Schools right now? We're all sitting down, right? We are. <laughs> it's um, almost $1.7 billion. Mm-hmm. And what's the budget of the city? Anyone know? It's uh, probably about a I'm going to be generous. It's probably about a third of that. Exactly. Okay, now, Michelle, I'm just being devil's advocate right now. You're fine. Okay, and I want you to tell me the pros and cons of the mayor choosing the superintendent, superintendent being responsible to the mayor, and, and Mayor Andre Dickens. That I know you may not even want this responsibility. Nobody asked me to say this. But some cities have that model. 
okay. as opposed to the board choosing the superintendent. And then there are other models where superintendents are elected, mm -hmm. and you can talk about pros and cons of that. So uh, uh, give, uh, just talk about that for a minute, because without a dynamic leader and a strong leader, and we've had some superintendents that were very unpopular, and I, and I think they were set up, but go ahead and just talk about that, because we're going to have to have a darn good superintendent. Um, I agree with you that we've got to find a really good superintendent. Um, I, I'm not, I don't, um, I like Mayor Dickens, so I, I certainly don't want this to be um, a, a remark towards him by any ways. Mm -hmm. However, if you're going to ask the mayor to appoint a superintendent for your school district, um, you really have created something quite political. Definitely. Um, and I think, Chicago. Uh, <laughs> Philadelphia. And, 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 New York. And, and I think, you know, I think people need to be cognizant of that. Uh -huh. and you, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, in, and um, even though we, we try very hard, uh, at least I think we try very hard as a city to be nonpartisan, you are making a very partisan decision in that type of role and people are going to know so you wouldn't lean toward that um well as as a as a as a constituent of the mm -hmm. city and not as a board member but as a no i would prefer not what to about the superintendent themselves running for office that kind of model if they are elected tell us what you think about that um, that would be quite interesting to be quite frank because I think it's very difficult for us to find someone or at least it has been um, uh, it has been over the past several years it's been very difficult to find someone who really understands the city of Atlanta we are um, a very complex city mm -hmm. I mean we're very progressive to put it mildly yes we're very progressive <laughs> um, but we're very complex mm -hmm. and um, I don't think we have, we may, and I, I certainly don't want to put my foot in my mouth, we may have someone who's homegrown, but that's the kind of leadership that we need. We need somebody who really understands the complexity mm -hmm. of the city. Um, and, um, and, and and can withstand some of these financial forces that play into APS. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then also understand that we're a very diverse, and most people see us as divided city. I don't see us as divided, but I understand where folks are coming from. Um, you know, the way, and to, to be quite frank, and, and this is nothing new, it's a very north-south kind of conversation, mm -hmm. and I don't view it that way as, as a board member. But I understand where people are coming from when they say those types of mm -hmm. statements. Um, it, it, you know, so it's 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 that deep complexity, um, not just from school board, but also the way that the cities run and the business influence that we have. I mean, think about it. I mean, we're the leader of Delta. We're the leader of Coca Cola. I mean, Invesco is like a major hand right now. UPS. Um, UPS, yes. I mean, it, it, the list goes on. Company. Yeah, mm -hmm. the list goes on. Home so, Depot. Uh, Home Depot. Start me getting it. Don't okay. speak it. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep on going, yeah. Cordelia. Yeah. I mean, so it, it, it becomes, um, it just becomes very complex. And I think you need mm -hmm. somebody who's incredibly sophisticated to step into that. And then what I will say is, they can't get caught it caught up into that. Does that make sense? They need to understand that yes, that's part of my plate, but that's not my that, plate. That's part of the plate, that's, right? Yeah, that's part of my mm -hmm. plate. That's part of what I have to deal with, but that's not my plate. My plate because, is not to be there. Because as you know, sitting in the teacher's seat and head of a teachers union in the other mm -hmm. role that I play, we are very much interested in seeing these top companies uh, mentor, train, have programs in these schools so that they don't have to bring other folk in here to Atlanta, but we grow our own. I agree, I agree. Um, and a commitment from those companies to do so. So that, that also leads to how much interaction does the board actually have with city council? I'm saying I catch the same thing out of other, of uh, other school districts too. These of course. governments usually don't even mm -hmm. talk, meet, yeah. or what have you. That's a problem. No, well, so mm -hmm. um, we do have which I think the folks that are on that committee are trying very hard to push this forward. 
uh, in the past, we've tried very hard to have this joint uh, meeting between city council and the board. And then over the past year or so, when they put this committee back together, they invited the Fulton County commissioners to, or a Fulton County commissioner or two to be on the board as well. And I recommended that they get somebody from DeKalb because I represent a little bit of DeKalb mm -hmm. over on the east side. Um, and But the, the issue is, People have to show them. The issue is whoever's on the committee needs to show up. Yeah. Uh, in their last meeting, they met, but it wasn't an official meeting because they didn't have a quorum. But they still spoke. Does that make sense? It like does, they still absolutely. had a conversation, but it wasn't an official meeting. So until there's some sort of uh, commitment from the elected officials to participate in those in that committee to try to figure out where the synergies are. Atlanta is a city up for grabs. And that's why you have so many different entities coming. Yeah. Well I think I think the other thing I think the <laughs> other thing time. is too, um, many of us have good relationships with mm -hmm. commissioners or, you know, councilmen or, you know, whatever. And so, you know, um, many times it's it's just an offline conversation of, mm -hmm. you know, hey, you know, can you get whatever health care to go down to x part of the city to check on the kids to make sure that their yeah, immunization that was a big one we just had a deadline on that one with immunization and there were i'm not going to get the number right but there were a tremendous there were thousands of kids who did not qualify because they weren't immunized and so you know and we got a list of the schools and you know it, that's just like forward to who you know so that they can try to figure out how right. to get the help to it's, go to that community mm -hmm. to do what we need to get done because so that's, leadership it's calls pretty, for substance vision and a lot of courage and coordination and, that and coordination which would would will have to say and as Maynard Jackson said to the bond company man and Unless you can do X, Y, Z, you get no business from the city of Atlanta. That caused him almost his career, and he came back. But what we want to say, anything you want to say? I do. I do have wrap one, it up. Go ahead. one quick question. Uh, I course. know you've heard of the, the term economic redlining. So uh, nothing against the mayor. I think the mayor is doing a fantastic job when it comes to affordability. Uh, I like his program. But APS has seemed to have adopted affordability, but most of the areas that they're looking at are concentrated in low-income areas. Um, I don't agree with that, that we have to put more affordability in the low income area. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? You mean it from, r with respect to our properties? To, to the property, let's take the Lakewood area. Lakewood is one of the most heaviest concentrated areas with affordability uh, for homes. Um, and the last school board meeting, I heard facilities talk about affordability, that they're gonna take some of their schools, the surplus properties, and turn them into more affordable homes. And the community like Lakewood don't want it at all. They want a certain percentage of it, but they don't want to have more saturation of it. So why don't we have it up in Why don't you have it on the north side? Why north is it side, always yeah. on the south side? Well, I, I will say, um, I don't know if we have any properties on the north side. I was going to ask what yeah, 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 like yeah, mm -hmm. uh, But let me just, let me say this. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. All board members, not at once, because we had to go in pairs. <laughs> And the mayor was like, why, do, why can't three or four of y'all come? <laughs> and it's because we all sit on committees and you can't, right. you know, you can't have, um, you can't have um, you can't a break quorum. Them all. Yeah, right. you can't have a quorum. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so we all had to go by twos, uh, like little ducks. Um, but, but to be quite frank, um, the mayor is also encouraging affordability mm -hmm. uh, with respect to our properties and and wants to understand how to help us however whatever facility says yes we do want to look at affordability because we know that that's an issue in the city i mean you can go to an invest atlanta meeting i mean mm -hmm. i sat on invest atlanta for five years and we would approve projects on the south side of town and i was like i own a duplex next door and y'all are charging like twice what my tenant you know i'm yeah. asking my tenant for you know um and so there is that kind of component however i don't think that that's i don't think that's the precedent i think that's a idea um if there needs to be if there needs to be a revitalization which mm -hmm. i also agree with 
um, revitalization in communities so that they can have um, grocery stores, banks, so many more things. Yes, like a, a real grocery. Well, I don't want to, you know, even if it's a local grocery, I, don't, I certainly don't want to, I grew up with mm -hmm. a local grocery. But, you know, a real grocery store, so to speak, um, you know, a, a real, you know, some banks, um, some retail, mm -hmm. you know, some, some engagement with respect to how the community is going to flourish. Got it. Um, I think that's very important, and I don't think APS is opposed to that. And I think with respect, at least in my opinion, with what we would do with facilities, and I'm not speaking on behalf of my colleagues, I'm speaking on behalf of Michelle, um, I would love for us to, you know, use a facility and say, okay, like, here's the coffee shop, here's the this, you know, here's a little whatever restaurant, mm -hmm. and then here's some housing, and here's the community space. I definitely agree with you. Well, I mean, that, that's always been my vision, and facilities is very aware of where I stand. Okay. Any well, last words? He's telling us over there to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you Anything you want to leave yes. the voters with? <laughs> um, it's very kind of you, Virginia, to have me, and I've enjoyed speaking with you and Omar this morning. Um, yes, I would like to run one more time. I would like to try to continue this work. It is very difficult um, to be on a board and build consensus over time with other colleagues and the administration to find a vision to help APS be better. And I would like to do that for four more years. And then I will be done. My daughter will graduate in 2026. If I am reelected, I'd be done in 2027. Uh-huh. You notice I'm saying, uh-huh. And uh, I guess I have the last words. And I'm going to say to you, you're still a young man, young woman. <laughs> Baby. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vertalia. Thank we you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Michelle.